Hello and welcome to a thrilling episode of Babington Unlimited coming up this week. We reflect on the Continental Team Championships in Asia and Europe, who came out on top and who made the cut for the year's only major team events, the Total BWF Thomas and Uber Cups 2020. Plus, Kim Astrup and Hans Christian Solberg Fittinghus talk about ways to save the planet one step at a time. Don't buy a new plastic bag each and every time you go grocery shopping. It's not good for the environment. And the HSBC BWF World Tour is back in action this week. We look ahead to the Barcelona Spain Masters 2020. After six days of intense competition in Manila, Philippines, a total of eight Asian men and women's teams were confirmed for May's Total BWF Thomas and Uber Cup Finals 2020. With all four semi-finalists of the Badminton Asia Team Championship 2020 gaining automatic entry, Thailand and Malaysia from the women's competition booked their tickets to Denmark, despite losing to Korea and Japan respectively. The opening tie in the finals was an 83-minute affair that saw Akane Yamaguchi save five match points before wrestling the match from a clearly exhausted An Su Young. やっぱりマッチポイントなので大切には戦ってはいたんですけど、あんまり、うーん、小守りに入らずに、え、積極的に、ま、負けても次のダブルスにいい流れをつなぐっていう気持ちでやってました。Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota then gave Japan a commanding 2-0 lead with their exceptional defense that brought out many errors from Lee Sohee and Shin Seung Chan. In the second singles, Japan's Sayaka Takahashi got off to a lightning start and was in complete control in her comprehensive win over five-time Uber Cup medalist Song Ji Hyun. やっぱりこう団体戦っていうのはみんなで一つになって優勝に向かって頑張れるので、本当に個人戦より正直嬉しい気持ちがあるんですけど、やっぱりこういいこういうプレーをできるっていうことは個人戦でもできると思うので、本
But at 1720 down, Chiam Jun Wei saved all three match points and eventually converted on his third match point to keep Malaysia's hopes alive. Just try to keep the ball, uh, shutter safe, put put it in, and try not go and do a simple mistake. And just, I think he's quite pressure, so I just attack. Yeah, of course, I'm very disappointed because I'm already leading 2017, but I can't finish it. Indonesia fielded a scratch pair of Muhammad Hassan and Fajar Alfian in their second doubles to take on Ong Yu Sin and Tio Yi Yi. The Indonesians were all business and relentless in their attack, winning in 37 minutes. Yang pasti kita harus bisa menekan mereka duluan ya, karena pertahanan mereka juga cukup rapat dan kita harus tapi punya harus punya keyakinan kita bisa menembus mereka. Ya pertama-tama saya nervous partner senior karena kan bingung gitu mau main apa seperti apa saya bingung gitu kan karena ya belum lepas mainnya tapi ya. Uh, tadi di lapangan uh, Bang Hasan juga sering memotivasi saya harus sebagai mana uh, si tahunya jadi saya enjoy aja sih di lapangan. The European Team Championships also concluded on Sunday in France and Denmark once again asserted their dominance in the region by winning both the men's and women's championships. The men's team won an historic eighth straight gold having never lost to the European men's team championships. Their opponents, the Netherlands, had also created history by reaching their first final, but the Dutch did not stand a chance against the top seeds. Victor Axelsen made short work of Mark Calio in the opening singles match, winning 21-16, 21-16 in just over half an hour. And the Dutch admitted the batteries were running low. Actually, I'm still quite tired from the match yesterday. It was also quite late when we finished and yeah, if you are not 100%, especially they, against Victor, then you have no chance. I think that you know when we play these forms team matches, you know the best thing you can do is to, um, no matter if you win or lose, is try to give uh, the best energy as possible uh, um, further on to the team. Sort of, um, you know, trying to show that no matter how you do on court, you uh, have a positive attitude, and I tried to do that today. Um, Mark made it a little bit tough for me in the second game, but I was really happy that I managed to sort of adapt and, and win the match. Kim Astrup and Anders Skarup Rasmussen also dominated their men's doubles match against Jelle Maas and Robin Tabeling, cruising through 21-13, 21-11 to give Denmark a 2-0 lead. Yeah, throughout the tournament, uh, everybody has uh, filled their role on the team uh, and I think we have done uh, very, very well uh, until now. Uh, so now it's up to uh, Antonsen, the mister, one and only, uh, the next one uh, to finish this. Anders Antonsen then secured the gold medal, defeating Joran Kuerkel 21-11-21-14 to rewrite history for the Danish team. With a game score of 48-0, the Danish men's team played the entire event without dropping a single game for the first time ever. The Danish women were also looking to defend their crown against fourth seeds, Germany. This was their third meeting in the final, with the head-to-head -head being one apiece. In fact, the last time Denmark missed out on gold in 2012, it was at the hands of Germany. The first match was a singles rubber between Germany's Yvonne Lee and Denmark's Julie Dawal Jakobsen. Lee took a narrow lead after changing ends in the decider, which proved enough to see the match through and hand Germany a 1-0 advantage with a 19-21, 24-22-21-16 win. I just keep keep going, keep going and just fight, never give up. There's a team relying on you and I myself of course don't want to lose as well. And yeah, it was at the beginning it was very tough to play because we both were very nervous and we just played around the middle and waited for the first mistake but towards the end there were so many long rallies and it was a great fight and uh, I really enjoyed the match. The women's doubles clash was a first time meeting between Alexandra Boja, Meta Paulsen and Linda Effler, Isabel Hertrich. This match went all the way too, ending 22-24, 21-16, 21-19 in favour of the Danes who levelled the tie 1-1. We knew that this will be a tough game and an important game for the team. Uh, 
especially after we lost the first lady single. So uh, I really felt good this morning, but uh, straight as we came on court, I was a little bit shaky and we never really found any rhythm. So it was a big mess and in the end it was just, uh, I think it was lucky. Denmark then seized the advantage in the second women's singles match. In a stark contrast to the previous matches, Lena Christofferson put her team 2-1 up with a swift 25-minute victory over Fabienne Depré. The Danes needed just one more win to secure victory and upstepped Mike and Fleurgaard and Amelie Magellan to complete the challenge. Their opponents, Stina Kuspert and Kilasso Ostermeyer, took the opening game. However, the top seeds rallied back in the second to force a decider. The Germans were left playing catch-up in the third as Froegaard and Magellan sealed a 19-21, 21-17, 21-12 victory to hand Denmark their sixth European Women's Team Championships and the fourth on the bounce. It's nice to us also play the final match and uh, get the win for the team, so uh, it was uh, very nice to play in there. I tried to relax a little bit, but it was really difficult with the pressure they put on us today. It wasn't pretty, I think, but uh, we fought our way through and that was uh, enough today, but uh, we were under a lot of pressure today. With the conclusion of all the Continental Championships, here's the list of teams who have qualified for the Total BWF Thomas and Uber Cup Finals 2020 to be played in Aarhus, Denmark, from the 16th of May. BWF Thomas and Uber Cup, the men's and women's world team championships. Oh, sensational! What a rally! Oh, my goodness me! That final shot, unbelievable! Time for a quick break here on Babington Unlimited. But when we come back, we hang out with Denmark's Kim Astrup and Hans Christian Solberg Wittinghus in Kuala Lumpur as they discuss a topic very close to their hearts. I know you also had this uh, experience where you went out fishing in Denmark, where it took you like how long to fill up a bag with the just lit up plastic? It literally took me two minutes to collect a whole bunch of plastic and throw it in the trash can, of course. <laughs> Hello guys, I'm Kim Estrup and this is Hans Christian Wittinghus. Right now we are in Kuala Lumpur and we would like to talk a little bit about waste issues uh, traveling around the world. Uh, what's your point of view on the waste issue? Yeah, well, we get to travel to many, many different cities. Uh, we travel uh, all of Asia, big parts of Europe as well. And uh, obviously it's more visible in some cities than others especially the very big cities uh, with a huge population like Jakarta here in uh, KL. You see quite a bit of uh, litter on the streets, whereas in smaller cities like Copenhagen uh, and in general the European cities, uh, you don't see it quite as obviously. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not a problem there. Everywhere we go in the world, there's litter issues. You see waste on the streets in all cities all over the world. So I think my experience is from all the traveling that we do that it's a global problem uh, and it's something that we uh, we need to start fixing. Yeah, and maybe it's also combined with the, with the systems that we have for waste uh, in the different countries. Uh, in Copenhagen and Singapore and Tokyo, you see a lot of trash cans around the city. In Jakarta and some places here in Kuala Lumpur, uh, it's difficult to even find a trash can. So where should you put your trash when you have it? Yeah, so it's not like we are bitter in Denmark or in uh, in Europe in general, it's just in some places we have better systems to actually deal with the, this kind of trash. But even in those places, it's still an issue. So it's still something that we need to uh, discuss on a global basis and, uh, and try to, uh, to work on uh, 
I know you also had this uh, experience where you went out fishing in Denmark, where it took you like how long to fill up a bag with the just lit up plastic? L literally, it took me two minutes to collect a whole bunch of plastic and throw it in the trash can, of course. <laughs> uh, but that was just outside Copenhagen, and there was plastic floating around in the ocean and in the nature there, uh, in the woods. It literally took me two minutes to collect a whole bunch of plastic, and it, it broke my heart to see that even when you just go to uh, enjoy your nature in, uh, in your country or in your city, uh, there's plastic floating around. Uh, it's not very nice to see. So it's definitely something we need to uh, start working on and we need to do it uh, as soon as possible. And it's, uh, it's a global thing, so we need to get started today. We have four simple suggestions on how to make a difference uh, when it comes to, to litter in the streets. And what is the first one? Keep. Number one suggestion is every time you go to a, a coffee shop or anything like that, uh, bring your own takeaway cup. And uh, maybe if you stay there, drink off a normal cup instead of a plastic cup. Uh, avoid single-use plastic. Uh, example, uh, forks and knives and plates uh, made of, out of plastic, it's a no-go. Second suggestion is that when you go to the toilet, only put things into the toilet that's supposed to go there. Don't throw anything else, contact lenses or whatever you have in the bathroom, only put into the toilet what's supposed to go there, because if you put other things there, it will go directly to the ocean. Number three is uh, when you go grocery shopping, bring your own recyclable bag. Don't buy a new plastic bag each and every time you go grocery shopping. It's not good for the environment. And the fourth and final one is the most basic one, but it's, uh, it's very simple and it's very uh, effectful. Don't throw waste and litter on the streets. It's as simple as that. If you have any waste and you can't find a bin, carry it on you and then find a bin at some point. It's a very simple thing to do, but it makes a huge difference to keep litter and waste away from our nature. So that's our four suggestions on how you can make a difference in a quite simple way. While Hans Christian Solberg Wittinghus and Kim Astrup were competing in Kuala Lumpur this January, the Danish duo attended a meet and greet session with budding players from a local club and answered some burning questions. Do you prefer singles or doubles in your junior career? I started out with playing all three categories. Uh, when I was 17 years old, I chose to prefer to play uh, men's doubles and mixed doubles, so I only played two categories. I realized that maybe my potential wasn't good enough in singles, but uh, at least in my last game uh, against Victor Axelsen, I, I beat him. So I, I, I was pretty good at singles, but I hope to be better in doubles. That's a pretty good way to finish your singles career. <laughs> How did you cooperate both on your sports career and education? It's always been that badminton was my main focus, uh, but I've never completely said no to education either. Uh, for me, especially in the periods where my badminton is not going well, it was actually quite nice to also have the ed education so I could get my mind off badminton and think, okay, I can uh, study a bit extra and I know I can do this well. That the main focus is badminton if that's what you want and then you can have the uh, education as a, uh, a good backup plan. Uh, that's, that's worked for me at least. How do you grow so tall as in any special diet for athletics? Uh, well, I actually don't think I'm very tall but uh, uh, no special diet, I've just uh, eaten a normal healthy diet. Uh, I'm not very strict with my diet. If I uh, see a nice cake, I eat the cake. Uh, but uh, in general, my meals are healthy. I don't eat junk food for meals. Uh, I think you're maybe a little more strict, actually. I think I'm a little more strict than uh, Hans Christian is. I'm not at that point where I can't eat candy or I can't eat a pizza, but I'm thinking a lot of what I put into my body because if I eat healthy, my body feels good. Uh, and when I feel good, I play good. 
that's in generally my, my tip to you guys is eat whatever you like. If your body feels good eating it, keep eating it. When did you start badminton as a little kid? I started when I was five years old. Yeah. So uh, just by coincidence, actually, uh, no one in my family ever played badminton. But we moved to a new city and uh, the local club uh, put a flyer in the mail uh, box inviting us for a Saturday badminton and my two older sisters wanted to go play and I just came along uh, and I never stopped playing ever since so I've now played for almost 29 years yeah. and I hope, to, I hope to play at least 29 more years <laughs> at least You're still very young I'm still very young <laughs> What were the most epic shots in your badminton career? Yeah, well, there's only one uh, choice, really. <laughs> there's only one. Yeah. <laughs> I've, uh, I hit the between the legs uh, winner against Lee Chung Wei with my uh, back to the net on his game point in the final of US Open. Uh, and he went straight to the net because he thought it was going to go to the net and uh, hit it over his head and it was a, uh, a plain winner. And it's a uh, once in a lifetime uh, shot, I, I think, especially when it's on a game point and turned out to be a winner as well. Of course, it takes a little bit of skill, but I would say it's 95% uh, luck that I actually <laughs> succeeded. So. But uh, there's many uh, wise people who said before me that it's better to be uh, lucky than to be good. So I think that's a proof of that. Actually, I think it was against Indu and Watanabe where we played a rally and I took it between the legs in a smash from Watanabe. I don't believe it. Oh. Well, that's just extraordinary. How on earth did that shuttle keep coming back from the Danes? Thanks so much. Thanks really so good nice. questions. Thank you so much. Very nice to have you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. The HSBC VWF World Tour returns after a three week break with the Barcelona Spain Masters 2020. The Super 300 tournament is the first of four European events to be held in February and March, which includes the first Super 1000 event of the season, the Yonex All England Open 2020. Before that, here's all you need to know about the Spain Masters in 90 seconds. The Paveo de la Val d'Ebron in Barcelona will host the event for a third straight year since the tournament was introduced to the Tour. Men's singles reigning champion Victor Axelsson returns to the happy scenes where he won the first of two tour titles in 2019. He leads the field this year as the top seed, with compatriots Rasmus Gemke and Jan O. Jorgensen also among the seeds. Axelsson faces Singapore's Lo Kien Yu in the opening round, with the winner of the Hans Christian Solberg Fittinghus Brice Levedez clash awaiting him next. India too will have a strong presence in men's singles, with second seed Sai Pranith the highest ranked of a seven-man contingent in the main draw. Sai will face compatriot Samir Verma in a tricky first-round encounter, while teammate HS Pranoy will go up against Malaysia's Liu Darren. Defending champions Mia Blichfeldt and Li Yang Wang Chi Lin will also be in the hunt for back-to-back -back wins in Spain. The Chinese Taipei men's doubles pair are the number one seeds in a stellar lineup. Li and Wang take on Russian tandem Vladimir Ivanov and Ivan Sozonov in a mouth-watering first round match. Also in their half are compatriots and fifth seeds Liao Min Chun and Su Ching Heng, who take on 2016 Olympic bronze medalist Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge. After a barren 2019, Kim Astrup and Anders Skarup Rasmussen will be looking to end their title drought in Barcelona, where they go up against 2019 World Junior Champions Leo Carnando and Daniel Martin, followed by a potential second round battle against Peridua Malaysia Masters 2020 champions Kim Gi Jung and Lee Yong Dae.
That's it for now here on Babington Unlimited. But join us again next week as we bring you the best of the action from finals day at the Barcelona Spain Masters 2020. Plus, we speak to former para badminton player turned commentator Bobby Griffin about his successful journey. I chose to do the things I do, left a job and a career, I suppose, in something that paid the bills and I was good at it. In the meantime, remember to log on to bwfworldtour.com for the latest news and features on the HSBC BWF World Tour. Bye-bye for now.